Hey guys, in this episode, we're going to show you how to build a really awesome and powerful tabletop catapult. Alright, what you're going to need to build this is the plastic cap from your favorite drink container, a hot glue gun, some rubber bands, a hobby knife or scissors, some square and round wooden dowels about a foot long, some craft sticks, also known as popsicle sticks, some mini clothes pins, and a lanyard or name tag clip. Okay, to start this build, grab four popsicle sticks and glue them into a square shape. We realize there's really no way you'll be able to keep pace with this tutorial, so feel free to hit the pause button or use the YouTube feature that lets you slow down the video. Once you have that finished, grab your hobby knife or scissors and cut off the very end of two popsicle sticks. Try your best to make these cuts as square as possible. Now take the sticks you just cut and glue them straight up and down on the inside edge of one of the sticks that are resting on top of the other two. Take another uncut stick and glue it across the top of the two vertical ones. Now run a bead of glue down the edge opposite the two vertical sticks and put one at a 45 degree angle onto it. This will help to strengthen the two vertical sticks. Grab two more and glue them together on the edge, angling them so that the open end is about the width of a stick. Turn the base upside down and glue it to the front underneath the two vertical sticks. It's a good idea to periodically strengthen the joints with more glue as you go. Grab a stick and lay it across the two vertical ones and mark a line on each side in line with the inside edge. Cut on the lines that you just marked and test it to make sure that it will fit between the two vertical sticks. If it does, glue it into place. Now to make some braces. Prop up a stick like shown and mark lines on the inside edges. Cut on your lines. If the angles are good after your test fit, lay the piece you just cut on top of another stick and trace the angles so that you will have two pieces cut exactly the same. Glue into place. Take two sticks and place them underneath the base opposite the two vertical sticks and overlap the end. Mark a line down the center of where the two overlap. After you cut on your lines, place it back on top the other stick and mark another line. That way when you cut it, the two pieces will have the correct angles for a nice glue joint. After gluing the two pieces together, slide the ends back under the base and glue into position. Slide a stick under the base. Make sure it is centered and even with the end. Mark a line on the inside edge so that when you cut it, it will be flush on both ends. Now mark five lines equal spaced in the center of the two sticks bracing the vertical ones. An easy way to transfer your marks to the other side is to take something like a skewer and mark lines onto it even with the ones you drew. Then transfer them to the other side like this. Now where you made your marks you're going to want to carve out some notches. A Dremel tool will come in handy like I have, but you can use a drill or a round file. You will see later what the notches are for. 
Okay, this next part is a little bit tricky, and most of it was just eyeballed. But you will want to take a stick and cut the ends off roughly 45 degree angles, and glue into place like this. Take another stick and cut the angles so that it can be glued to both the base and the stick you just glued with the 45 degree cuts. You may have to adjust your cuts a few times and also use a pencil to draw the angles you need to cut. If your cut is just a little bit off, sandpaper helps to adjust it until it's right. And like before, when you get your angles right on the first stick, place it onto another stick and trace it. This way you can easily make two pieces that are exactly the same. Take your hot glue gun and put just a little blob of glue on the seam. That way you can adjust the piece until it is right where you want it, and then go back and glue it into place permanently. Think of the hot glue gun like a welder. You can put a little tack weld on the piece just to hold and adjust it before you permanently weld the seam. Take two more sticks and cut the ends off again at roughly 45 degrees. Glue them onto another stick laying flat on the table. Then go to the other end of the two vertical pieces. This will act as braces so the catapult doesn't flip forward when you fire it. Now go ahead and glue another stick in the middle of the brace like this. It will help to reinforce it. Next we will take two sticks and cut them so that they will stand up vertically along the length of the base. This will help to reinforce the structure. It doesn't have to be perfect, but take your time fitting it into place that way you don't have to fill in any large gaps with hot glue. Take one of your round dowels and cut it so that it sticks out a little wider than the width of the catapult. I cut mine at about 6 and 3 quarter inches or 17 centimeters. Glue the dowel into place about 2 and a quarter inches or 5 and 3 quarter centimeters up from the table surface. Make sure to glue this well as it will have tension on it from the rubber bands. Take another round dowel and cut it the same length, and then glue onto the bottom corner on the opposite side of the other dowel like this. Take another one of your round dowels and cut it in half. That way you will have two six inch long pieces. Grab a ruler and mark a line in the center of the dowel on top. and take one of your six inch dowels and glue it onto either side of your center line so that the gap between them is big enough for your square dowel to easily slide in between. Cut two more round dowels so that they will lay flat on the base directly underneath the first two round dowels. It's also a good idea to slightly bevel the edges so that they will fit under the other two dowels. These will act as guides for the catapult mast so that it shoots straight every time. Now get one of your straightest square dowels and a bottle cap. Turn over and mark lines on either side of the dowel so you will know where to roughen up the plastic so that the hot glue will stick to it. Glue into place. Now if everything slides back and forth smoothly, it's time to glue on the lanyard clip. 
Slide it up the dowel and clip on one of your mini clothespins. Adjust it so that the square dowel is almost touching the back brace section. Then glue both the clip and the clothespin into place. Cut one more round dowel, the same length of the other two. Then get out the rubber bands because this build is almost complete. Take two rubber bands and slide them over the end of the bottom dowel, behind the two braces with the notches on them, and in between the guide dowels. It helps to use something like a pair of pliers in order to grab the rubber bands. Stretch them over the ends of the dowel on the opposite side. Take two rubber bands and stretch them over the top dowel just like you did on the previous one. Using something like a skewer or a pencil, slide it in behind the rubber bands so that you can put the mast back into place. At this stage, it's good to go ahead and give it a few dry test runs to make sure everything's working smoothly. I found that I needed to actually shave off a little bit of wood on the bottom of the mast, that way it wouldn't bump against the table. I also trimmed down the inside edge of the mini clothespin so that it would release the trigger easier. If everything works smoothly after you've done your adjustments, go ahead and put the mask back into place. Now here's the reason for those notches. Take the last round dowel that you cut and place it into the middle notch, then fold one rubber band over on either side and loop it around all three dowels. Then take another rubber band on each side and loop over all three dowels again and over the top corners of the center vertical pieces. Okay, now the reason for the dowel that's sitting in the notches is that if you wanted to shoot higher, you just push it down a few notches, or lower, you push it up a few notches. So it's adjustable. And now the catapult is completed. Thanks everyone for watching, and if you like this tutorial and want to see more like it, Please give it a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks.